we're going to look at relative velocity. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it the way that I think is the simplest. When it gets to more complex problems, you might have to use a different method. But for right now, we're going to do something simple. There are several parts to this, and they'll get increasingly more complex. So let's start with something simple. What I've got here is I've got a swimmer swimming this way. The velocity of the swimmer is 6 meters per second to the east. Of course, these numbers don't make sense. Nobody can swim that fast. But I want to keep the numbers simple so that uh, you don't get bogged down with the number. OK, the swimmer swimming this way. Here's the shore over here. The swimmer jumps in and swims across to this side. The water is moving this way. So what I do is I, I think I have to make up an equation to show what's happening here. And it's very easy. We just think, OK, we want the result. What happens to the swimmer? Well, that's easy. What happens to the swimmer is made up of the fact that the swimmer is swimming and the water is moving. So I come up with an equation. The resultant is equal to the swimmer. He's moving in the water plus the water is moving. So there's my equation. Whatever happens to the swimmer is the result of the swimmer moving and the water moving. So if I add these two up, it'll tell me what the result is. So let's take a look here. The result is the swimmer. The swimmer is 6 meters per second east. I'm going to drop the units so again we don't get bogged down with things we don't need at this point. And the water, 4 south. Well, this is going to be a simple right angle triangle. If it was more complex, you have to look at the videos on um, adding vector. So 6 east plus 4 south is going to give me my result. And I can already sort of predict, if I'm swimming that way, and the water's going that way. I should expect to end up going this way. So let's take a look. I draw my x and y axis because I'm going to add them up. I've got 6 east and I've got 4 south. Remember, we added vectors in a continuous path. 6 east, 4 south. I've added those two, so start to finish. This is what we call the resultant. And in this case, it's my resultant velocity. So how am I going to find that velocity? Well, this is a right angle triangle, so I use Pythagoras, and I say resultant is the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. Take the square root, and we get dr is equal to 7.2 meters per second. So there's my result. Now what I want to do is I want to find this angle. Well, to find the angle in a right angle triangle is quite easy. I have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So I'm going to use the inverse tan. So maybe I'll go up to here. Opposite over adjacent. The angle is going to be the inverse tan of that. So my angle works out to be 34 degrees. So when I have the magnitude of my resultant velocity, I have the angle. And I'm going to call this east. So this is going to be east 34 south. So my final answer is 7.2 meters per second east 34 south. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a few more, but they'll become increasingly more complex. This is a continuation of the last problem. In the last problem, we had a swimmer swimming east in a river, they're going from one shore to another, while the water is moving this way. And we said that whatever happens to the swimmer is a result of the swimmer and the water both moving. So we added up the swimmer and the water, and we got that the resultant was 7.2 meters per second east 34 south. Now what I want to know is, how long does it take to cross the river? You'll notice I'll give you a distance now, up here. And how far downstream does the swimmer go? Well, if you look, this diagram here is uh, similar to this diagram. Here's where the swimmer starts. The swimmer is going to swim across the river, which is 300 meters wide. The swimmer is going to go this way. The water is going to go that way. So this is the resultant path of the swimmer. And this triangle, which is the triangle showing the velocities, the swimmer swimming this way and the water going this way, this triangle and this triangle are related. This velocity matches up with this displacement. So I consider those two a pair. This is how far downstream the swimmer ends up. This displacement is in line with this velocity. So I consider them a pair, and I'm going to use them to calculate them. Now it's true, the swimmer isn't going this way, then down, this way, then down. The swimmer is taking this path. 
But when the swimmer takes this path, they're going six meters per second towards that side and four meters per second downstream. So every second, this swimmer ends up six meters over there and four meters down there. And so these two triangles are gonna help. For instance, I wanna know how long it takes to cross the river. Well, I have a formula, V equals V over T, because the swimmer, and all this is happening with uniform motion. So I rearrange that, T equals V over V. So I need a distance and a velocity. Well, I've got a matched pair. This 300 meters from one side of the shore to the other matches up with this velocity. Again, this is the velocity that's actually happening, but this is the component in the direction of the displacement. So I can use those two. T equals distance, 300, divided by um, 6 is 50 seconds. The swimmer's going to be in the water 50 seconds, follow this path, and end up at the end from that start. I didn't use this displacement and this velocity because I didn't have this displacement. So I couldn't plug in there. I didn't use this displacement, which is what actually ends up happening, and this velocity because I don't have that one. Okay, let's look at the part B. How far downstream does the swimmer go? Well, the swimmer started here and ends up this far downstream. So this displacement goes with this velocity, they're a pair, so I can use those. But again, if I use this formula, I need two pieces of information. I've got the velocity. What I need is something else, and that would be the time. The time it takes the swimmer to go from here to here is the time it takes to cross, and is the time the swimmer is going downstream. So V, I'm going to use the same formula, V equals V over T. This time I'm looking for a displacement or a distance. So D, rearrange it, is V times T. So I'm going downstream at 4 meters per second. The time is 50 seconds. So the displacement is 200 meters downstream. 